Hello everyone and welcome back to Factorio Base Tours. I'm Exterminator and thank you so much for joining me. It has been a really, really long time. Uh, I don't really even feel an apology is adequate. Um, it's, I, I, I've just been, I've been so incredibly busy for months that, you know, these take a while because, you know, they're usually really cool big bases and, you know, I want to dedicate some time to look through them. Um, and I just, I've been so hectic and, and time pressed and energy pressed and stuff that uh, I just kind of keep seeming to be pushed back. I have a huge queue of them to do. So when I get time, I absolutely like there's going to be a ton coming in the future at some point. Um, but I'm starting, I'm kind of just doing first come first, serve, like the order in which they were submitted is the order I'm doing them in. So we're doing uh, a base by Imp. Um, I actually previously, like two or three base tour videos ago, did another base by Imp. Um, it was their 6K science permanent base. Um, this is a 10K belt, uh, basically belt only base. Um, 10K science per minute. And uh, again, like I know I already did a base from Imp, um, but they submitted, as far as I could find, they were like the farthest back one that submitted to me um, since the previous one I did. So I'm just kind of going in order. Um, but this is, <laughs> oh, this is one heck of a base, let me tell you. So, uh, the, the, they did give an, an explanation here, um, or a bit of a description, rather, on kind of what the deal is with this base. Um, so it's highly optimized for UPS with lots of direct insertion, which we will see throughout the base. Um, and basically, uh, they waffled between um, doing like trains to bring resources in and, and send stuff between builds or doing belts. And um, they did some testing in the editor and basically realized that trains were actually more UPS intensive, performance intensive than just doing lots of belts, because, which does make sense now because it does have optimized belts in such a way to where uh, basically if you have big stretches of belts without like inserters or something grabbing from them they're extremely efficient like probably the most efficient like ups wise um mode of transport in the game um trains not as much um it's powered by solar which we'll look at um dedicated module factory um basically um the entire 10 science per minute factory only has 22 belt balancers which is actually fairly low considering it's an entire belt base and a very big one um and it, it is really UPS efficient. So uh, just to start off, let's look at the numbers. Make sure this is in fact 10K, and it is. You can see 10K, 10K, even 11 on some of these here. Uh, so this is over one minute if we look over, usually, I don't know what the play time is on here, but usually over like 10 hours is a good um, way to look at, at like what the real production is, because it fluctuates. Um, so 10K, oh, 10K from Green Science, all the way down 10k boom right uh, and also if we do time so this has eight days 11 hours so like two over 200 hours 220 ish 230 ish some odd hours um, pretty good now this is the kind of uh, make everything potentially starter base it looks like that we are in here and I mean this is a this is a pretty decent sized starter base so we have I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because this isn't really the the meat of the map, um, but the builds here are similar to the rest of the map, um, just smaller. So we have smelting here, uh, fairly straightforward. Again, uh, it is very direct insertion heavy, which I, which is good. You know, it helps with uh, UPS and performance. Um, so we're belting an ore. This is pretty standard, honestly, to um, smelt it into plate and then direct insert into. Uh, steel. Now it is interesting that they are putting it in boxes. Like this isn't bad by any means. Um, it probably was for beacon um, alignment and stuff. Uh, like a lot of times, I build my builds where it's literally just direct from the iron plate into the steel. Um, but that would kind of, I think, mess up the beacon alignment a bit. So as you can see, this is uh, being hit by twelve beacons, and, and that's probably why they did that. Um, because you know the two modules in there, that's two effect sources, and the remaining twelve is the beacons, um, and it works really well. I mean, just just very well put together smelting build. Um, as you can see, you know, <laughs> there was no joke about it being a belt only. They are belting in resources from the patches, and this is like what I was talking about. 
Um, when you have these huge stretches, I mean, this isn't even that huge, but when you have these big stretches of belts with, with like nothing grabbing from them, like no inserters, no splitters, nothing like that, um, they're incredibly efficient perfor game performance wise. Like this is very, very performance efficient. Um, obviously once it gets into here and there's inserters grabbing from it and undergrounds and splitters and, and all that stuff, um, I'm not sure the undergrounds really affect the performance, but you know, then the, then it gets not as much, but getting it here was the main debate between doing belts and trains for imp here. Um, and then copper, very straightforward. Um, basically just every other, um, right side, left side, right side, left side, just to get the belt full. Coming down, all blue belt. Um, again, nothing like crazy off the wall in the builds. Um, in the circuits here, one to one, as we see basically throughout most of these bases, since that is a very close ratio um, when moduled um, rather than the normal uh, three to two. And then come over. I mean, this isn't like I said, I'm not going to spend a ton of time here. It's basically just the starter base and then the make everything and all that. Uh, pretty standard bus here. Um, you can see, okay, <laughs> personally a little upset that they built on the ore patch, but that's just my own thing. Nothing actually wrong with that. Um, like based on the resources, they don't really need that ore. Um, speaking of resources, before we move much further, uh, this is basically an, uh, this is an unmodded game. Um, they are using, they, they were using max rate calculator that doesn't affect like the actual production or gameplay or, or, or like any of the numbers really. It just basically gives you more production data. Um, it's not like, you know, modded buildings or anything. And they didn't, um, spawn in resources either. These are vanilla generated resources. They were bumped up to maximum. I think on all settings, um, and biters and pollution are turned off, which is fairly standard ish for mega base. You know, there's definitely mega bases that have biters and pollution. Um, but for, for performance reasons, um, they were turned off and I think that's completely fine. Again, this is just my opinion, but I really don't think like the only reason for pollution to exist essentially is to aggro biters. Like it doesn't actually hurt your factory. doesn't do anything for your factory. It's basically for the biters. Um, and in my opinion, a mega base is about the base and not about the fighting. So, like, I, I don't see a problem with turning off biters. And then if you turn off the biters, there's zero point in having pollution aside from just seeing a huge pollution cloud, which does hurt your UPS. So that's just my thoughts there. Um, but yeah, so no pollution, no biters. But like, all these resources, vanilla generated. They didn't use creative mode, as far as I know. Um, they made a lot of these builds, like test builds of these in the editor. Um, to test them um, but my understanding is that this was all um quote unquote legitimately built um so uh like it, so modules here this is like the dedicated module production base that was mentioned um quite a lot of module production so i mean i say quite a lot it is a lot you know two fully beaconed speeded machines um of of uh productivity and then actually four of speed here um which makes sense because you use, you know, you have a lot of beacons, which use a lot of speed modules. Um, this is quite a lot. If we actually look at the production, uh, I would be very interested in the, uh, how many modules they've actually made. So this is actually really nuts. Like modules are expensive. We know that. And they've made almost 160,000 level three speed modules and half that in productivity. But that is a ton of modules. 19 million speed one models. Holy cow. That is craziness. Um, so yeah, this is the whole module factory. Again, tons of kind of direct inline uh, production. So we have the plastic iron, um, which is flowing down. Uh, okay, so yeah, I see. Okay, so it flows vertically into then horizontal lines that send it across to where it needs to go. Copper basically does the same thing, but flows upwards and then uh, to the left. And um, then we have circuits. So it, they're both kind of just fed into circuits. Like I said, it's kind of an inline, like, you know, base materials. And then after that, the next level thing. And then the circuits are sent over to the red circuits. Um, and copper cable being belted, totally fine for red circuits. Um, overall, just really good builds. It looks like, unless I change it, I haven't fully looked at the mega base section yet um 
unless they change their builds, it looks like probably just full 12 begin throughout the whole base. Um, so if that's the case, I won't really mention it from this point on. Um, we'll just assume that it is in most cases, except like this, because if you're doing direct insert like that uh, without the chest, it does kind of throw it off a bit. So this one is uh, 10 beacon, and then this one is 8 beacon. That's fine. Um, blue circuits, etc. So there we go. Uh, the, really, the only trains used in this map are these here. And we have a... Not really sure what, what the naming scheme is here, but uh, landfill, trash, and belts. So a ton of belts. Obviously, their base is, is entirely belt-based, so <laughs> they need a lot of belts. That's a lot of blue belts, 32,000. Um, landfill, and then this is just like a build it like a base building train, basically, engineering train. Um, and then we have that. So it comes out here. So this is a starter base, and they went way out here. Um, probably for richer resources and just to make sure they had enough space. Um, and the first split here brings us all the way up to this gigantic, and I mean gigantic, solar field. Um, this is a ton of solar. Uh, so over here, we have some uranium production. Uh, looks like probably, yeah, for a uranium fuel. Makes sense. Um, and then if we come over here, this is the... Um, this is some oil production, it looks like, or... Okay, so this is accumulator. Sorry, this is accumulator and I, I would think solar. Uh, yeah, solar. Sorry, I, the icons are hard to see in here. So this is solar and accumulator production. Um, smart to do it right by the solar field um, instead of trying to transport insane amounts of them by train. Uh, if we find a power pole. Uh, so there is 1.8 million solar panels. That is a lot of solar panels. <laughs> Holy moly. 1.5 million uh, accumulators. So this base is currently using uh, 69 uh, gigawatts, almost 70. Nice um, capacity of up to 113, basically, which is pretty nuts, all in solar. Um, there's actually been some pretty extensive discussions uh, lately in uh, Discord about solar and and, uh, and its advantages, disadvantages. And this is going to be displayed perfectly here. Uh, the advantages are it is basically nil when it comes to UPS. It basically, this entire field um, counts as like one entity um, for performance reasons, like per for, as performance is concerned. Um, the downside is of course it takes a gigantic amount of room and a lot of time to actually build this. Um, and this is I would assume where the road ports are and they took them out, which is smart. Um, and you can see it's not covered by radar either because radar would also hurt the performance. So they have been very conscious when building um with, with keeping all that in mind um so the solar is pretty straightforward again just direct insert throughout this whole thing as much as possible anyways um so the cable direct insert into the circuits direct insert through a chest into the solar panels and there's some fast solar panels here too a beacon with four speeds in it um and then direct insert the copper into here um so there's that uh, not a ton to really examine here the oil build is right here very convenient there was oil actually they probably picked this spot specifically uh, like they saw these resources that were needed to build the solar and accumulators and then chose this as their uh field layout would be my guess um and then so so this is the rail up here this comes way to heck over to basically go around the whole thing um and you saw the edges of it this is the mega base and again we're not joking. This is an entirely belt base. Base. There is <laughs> really the only trains are for science. Um, so, and, and they're huge trains at that. Uh, so you can see like coal. There's 1.2 billion coal, 1.1 billion iron. Uh, is this actually being mined? Okay, it is. Um, uh, basically a billion copper. And, uh, you know, you may look at this and be like, wow, this is not very much mining drills. Uh, but considering they have mining productivity at 177 currently, working on 178, that's a lot of pro that's 1,770 because each one is 10% productivity. That's ba basically it's making each one of these miners uh, be equivalent to like 17, almost 18 miners, uh, with, and then you add in the modules. So. Uh, this is pretty significant. So you, you, essentially, you can take like this and multiply it by like 17, and then 
add in speed models, all that, and, and like you're, I mean, you're cranking. Um, not to mention, it's actually only on half a belt. So this is really interesting to me. I haven't really, I shouldn't say never, but I've almost never seen um, copper and coal like combine on a belt. It's something you really don't see very much at this level. Like obviously when you start your smelting in the beginning game, you're gonna have, it's very common to have this, but um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're using electric furnaces. <laughs> they are. Um, so they're not using this for powering the furnaces. Uh, and then the iron has its own bell here. So this actually comes through, uh, and this is uh, almost the same build as in the starter base, except this actually doesn't use the chest. This is just eight beacon throughout. <clears throat> I'm going to make, you know, so spacing works with that 8-beacon. Um, but uh, I I'm really actually quite interested where this coal and copper is going. Um, so it's just being sent through. Maybe it was just for convenience since they were near each other. Uh, so... As it ends here... Okay, so, I mean, they're using it for plastic. Wow. There was a lot of thought that was put into this because like i would imagine they planned this from the beginning uh to have coal and copper and then i mean these builds are designed in such a way where that just like that works like the builds are catered to this setup it seems like um you know because you know plastic is made here and you're this and then like this is actually pretty ingenious like <laughs> I don't know. Maybe like I'm I'm really impressed because like this is a lot of thought that went into this stuff. Um cuz like you you put coal and copper on a belt together which at this stage of the game is pretty rare in my opinion. Um and then you build in such a way to fully take advantage of that by making copper copper cable, plastic and red circuits all in a teeny little like square-ish here or plus and uh and then direct insert to get your red circuits. It'd be because it's all made right here. Um, and then uh, this is made here. This is really impressive. Um, and then these flow over. So sulfur and red circuits come over to blue science. I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the insert is hidden. Okay, um, and then these are sent off. Um, this is so. Then this switch is actually to twelve beacon on on these builds for the most part. Um, so these actually don't have speed modules. Um, this is definitely intentional since none of them do. Uh, probably just it's unnecessary, really. Um, but yeah, I want to look a little more at this. I just got distracted by the interesting <laughs> coal and copper, which is just a really really smart way of doing it. Uh, so then iron has its own belt again, just like these are massive belt sections, <laughs> ridiculously massive belt sections. Um, and then this doesn't have a balancer back here. Um, it actually just doesn't have one, which is fine. That seems to be working fine because it's a dedicated lane for every single smelter. Um, best I can tell. And the lanes are just always full because the miners have insane productivity and the patches are super rich. So there's really no need to balance. Like if you were sending, it, you know, if you had say eight lines coming in and sending it to 12 smelters then you'd probably want a balancer, but they are sending just one full line to every single smelter. So the balancer is completely unneeded, which is really good. Uh, and then we already kind of looked at the iron steel uh, comes up, looked at that. Uh, this is just kind of a full thing across of all of this. Sulfur is made. Um, the oil, where is this oil brought in from? Okay, so nice. Oil is actually very close. It's uh, right next to it here. They've made the oil here and then kind of sent things. So they, they, they opted to go, which totally makes sense for this. They opted to go um, basic oil production rather than advanced uh, because they only need petroleum here, right? You don't need heavy oil. You don't need light oil or lube for for blue science um and it would be kind of pointless to spend the time and the space and stuff to then crack all the stuff um so they just made a dedicated oil build just for this build um which i really like they're all kind of dedicated production modules and uh just made sulfur it's super it's way easier 
Um, nowhere near as complicated, or, you know, it doesn't consume near as much space. Um, and we have blue cyan, and this comes up into these gigantic trains. This thing is... <laughs> this thing is, uh... Maybe? Can I, can I not, um... Really? Okay, so I can't do that. Okay, well, what we can do, maybe, is do this. Let's actually blueprint it. It's probably an easier way to do this, but... Um, 32. So this is 32 cargo wagons long. Full blue science. This is nuts. This thing it, it currently has 45,000 blue science in it, and I don't think it's even remotely full yet. Um, so then this goes... This is a double-headed train. Um, comes in, I would assume, this way. Yeah, because of how the locos are facing the station. And then it leaves and heads out to wherever it needs to go. Now we have a stacker here. This looks like the labs, potentially. Um, yeah, so we'll look at that later, but that's blue science. Uh, let's move on to um, green science. Super simple. Really small build. Green science is easy. Uh, just, you know, copper. See, now, now they're using the belt mixing uh, again here to bring iron and uh, copper on the same belt um, and then they make the circuits it's all in the same belt so they don't need to be running multiple belts again uh, game performance was very much taken into consideration here why run two belts and have double the UPS hit when you can just run one with two, re two of the resources you need on it and you're good to go basically um, and then we have the uh, inserter production here again all direct insertion uh, <clears throat> belt here again direct insertion um, it's not speed or anything it's just unnecessary like it just as you can see everything's backed up it just doesn't need to be speeded and that's extra power it's taking um, and then we're making green science same deal with the massive trains here um, one belt from each thing all going into it don't need a balancer they could balance I mean they're not full belts but that's fine and doing balancers I think would just hurt performance because of all the splitters um, <clears throat> so there's green science. If we come over to this, is, must be a late science. This is a huge build. Um, purple science, yellow science. Okay. So yellow science. Um, pretty much same deal. Uh, now they're making red circuits here, so they have. Let's see. I'm trying to locate the copper. Okay. So copper comes up on this one. It's actually a fill belt. Uh, they probably just need that much, or, I mean, they don't really, well, they technically need coal here? So, they actually are putting blue circuits and plastic on the same belt. Just interesting. Um, traces back, Let's see where plastic is made here. Plastic, plastic, plastic is somewhere. Plastic, like, way down here or something? Okay, low densities are made here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's so much stuff. Where's the plastic? Oh, this plastic goes so far. Holy cow. Okay, here we go. Finally. So the plastic is made <laughs> way down here and then sent like all the way to the opposite side of the build. Um, sharing with the steel in this case. And then later on, it ends up merging with the uh, blue circuits. Um we have tons of copper coming in here to just kind of pass us through, essentially. Um, again, a dedicated oil build. Now they are, of course, doing uh, some cracking here. So they're doing combo both. They're doing basic oil production for a ton of petroleum, and then they're doing a little bit, like really a little bit, like three refineries worth of advanced, um, just to get the, uh, probably just to get the lube, honestly. Um, I think that's really all they need from this. Uh, and then they're just cracking the light oil into petroleum. Um, so this is basically just fully for the lube. Um, some circuit stuff going on here, I thought I saw. Yeah, just to very simply control, like, when this pump turns on and off based on how much is in here. Uh, again, just, like, I mean, this looks really cool, but this is a ridiculous amount of belt. <laughs> Holy moly, um... It just comes over, and then I'm curious. This. So, okay, this is really cool. It looks interesting on the map, and then when you look at it here, like, come on. This is pretty sweet. 
just the aesthetic of this is really neat. Just like the massive rivers of resources passing through each other. Crazy. How many belts is this? 32. Pretty easy. Say standard. So it's probably 32 of each. Yep. <clears throat> they come over, go up, through. Again, no balancers, not needed. In fact, they said there's 22 balancers. I don't even know if I've seen one. Maybe they were mostly in the starter. Well, no, they said in the mega base. Um, maybe I missed them. Purple here. Uh, so let's start maybe from this end this time. Again, huge amount of uh, belts coming in. Basically a full belt for every uh, column here. All basic oil again. Uh, we already looked at steel builds. You know, no need to really stare at those too much. Uh, and then we come up. Mm, come up, come up. And, and these builds are massive. Again, so here's the same deal. Very, basically the same type of build. Except that they're not actually putting copper and coal on the belt. Same build as the... Uh, Blue science. Um, they're actually putting stone and coal on a belt this time, uh, and then they're sending. So they're sending this up, and then the stone passes along with the coal all the way up to what I would assume is just going to be for rail potentially. Um, see, oh my gosh, just so much processing. Okay, let's go up here, um, or stone brick even. Uh, let's see. I have stone on, with steel here. It's so it switched probably from being with the coal belt over to being with steel, um, which is super smart, um, cause this needs steel, this needs stone. And then they're actually putting stone in on the productivity belt and sending it up. Productivity comes here. Uh, well, some of it anyways. Yeah. So using a very, uh, very basic, but it's extremely effective trick of the side loading here to because how this, for anyone who doesn't know, basically what happens with this, this is a nice way to get like one lane only onto half of a belt. Um, basically, the stone is like hitting this side flap, essentially, um, since it's on this close side and like hitting the metal there. So it doesn't pass through this. And then the uh, item that's on the right side here can, as you can see, it's just kind of slipping past. So this is a really cool, it's a really nice way to do it. Very common, but super effective. Um, and then, so then the stone stops here. I'm curious, where are they getting their stone? Okay, so this stone is actually on the left side. So this is the st stone that was with the steel, and this goes for rails. Now I'm always interested in looking at rail production in mega bases because you need so much dang rail for blue or for purple science. I'm always interested to see how they do it. And this is a very pretty straightforward build, actually. Very um, really actually more uh. Simple than I than I thought it would be. That's not a negative at all. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised they can do this with only this many inserters. But this is never pausing, from what I can tell. The the purple science. Um, in fact, this is kind of getting packed up. I mean, this is uh, this is actually not even fully beaconed. Well, six beaconed essentially, um, and this one's ten beacon. Um, so purple science again comes up to these gigantuan trains uh then come over to red science which is of course the simplest of all of them sharing resources on the belt again um this is kind of a cool like crisscross type of deal here pretty neat just on the left one on the right comes up boom straight in like this is <laughs> this is about about as simple as you can get honestly uh iron and copper same belt, just kind of diagonal here. Boom, boom, grab and grab. And then, like, this is such a nice, simple, simplistic, but very effective red science build for mega bases. Like, this is something I may keep in mind for myself or if you guys are looking for inspiration. Like, this is perfect, right? You have iron and then just boom, insert gears and then copper and then you have red science. I mean, it, that's obviously the recipe for red science. It's simple, but. Like, this could be done in a much more convoluted way, but this is just so simple. Um, and I love the fact that there's just no belts at all in this production cycle. I mean, obviously, to get these in, but... Um, so there's red science. Not much to really discuss more on that. And then lastly... Well, almost lastly, what is this? Okay, this is just... Solid fuel? Rocket fuel? 
uh, rocket, rocket fuel, probably, or something. Rocket fuel? <laughs> uh, oh, satellites. Okay. All the way at the end here. So this is a bajillion satellites. Obviously, they have to launch uh, 11 rockets a minute, uh, because as we've been over in previous videos, um, you can't actually achieve, like, you can't launch the same amount of rockets per minute as the amount of science you're trying to do. You have to do one more. So if you're doing 10K, you have to launch 11. If you're trying to do 5K, you have to launch six. Because of the animation, you can't actually, like the rocket takes slightly more than a minute to full from start of building all the way to actually launching and getting your science. Um, so you have to build like one more extra past the amount of science you want to produce per minute to actually get the full amount. Um, unless they change that. I mean, it's been a while, obviously, since I made one of these, so it's possible they changed it, but to my knowledge, they have not. Um, so we have a, well, why don't we, why don't we actually count them here? And I might just be proven wrong. Nope, there's 11. Okay, so that's still the case. Um, uh, you know, rocket control units here, just belt. Man, this is an expensive belt here. Half of it is uh, low density structures, half of it is rocket fuel. This is half a belt of rocket control units going out. Um... And then, so these are running along. This isn't actually feeding it. The feed forward is here. The blue circuits and the uh, modules. So come down. Um, this is kind of where we're making the modules. Uh, so we have, again, just full advantage of direct insertion whenever possible. Red circuits directly inserted into the modules. They're grabbing from here. Iron and copper directly inserted into green circuits, which is directly inserted through chests, of course, into the red circuits. Um, and then, uh, so, so this is basically just continue down for the amount they need. Uh, and then if we continue down here somewhere is the, so here's, uh, so iron here, which goes up. And then the copper and plastic here um, for the uh, low density structures. So again, copper directly inserted to low density structures um, and then they're belting in the steel and plastic from down below. Uh, and this is like, th this is taking full advantage uh, of space. Like there are no open tiles in here whatsoever. This, <laughs> this is jam packed in here. I, like I said, I imagine this is, this took a ton of planning and stuff to have this all be, be as it is. Um, and then steel, we've already looked at those type of builds. Uh, uh, rocket fuel, again, just solid fuel direct insert easy peasy productivity used throughout the base wherever possible as you've probably noticed um and then uh comes up through here and um merges with the steel or no it's just on half a belt i just like switch it back and forth here it's probably the only way they could to actually get it through here honestly um and then it comes up and through so overall, I mean, and then you, I mean, this is a re look at the resources used for this. Holy cow! Um, so boom, boom, boom. This is like let's just let's just absorb. Let's just take this in for a minute. This is 88 belts of raw resources, completely full, just massive rivers of them. Now, okay, I'm pro I'm obviously missing something because in their summary they said. Uh, there are 22 belt balancers consisting of 157 splitters in the 10k factory. Uh, I haven't seen any. Maybe they're actually just all on the starter base and they just meant like on the whole map because I don't, I haven't seen any balancers in these builds. I'm pro I probably missed them. Let me know if I missed them. Uh, I like there's th these builds are so dense that I'm probably still missing things. Um, but then this comes up and we have like trash and landfill and stuff every, well, it, well, I guess just at this end, um, or every other red doesn't have it, but these do. Um, and then this comes up, there's that. And then the, uh, labs are smack dab in the middle here. You got a glimpse that through the map earlier, all the trains pull into this stacker. Well, stacker unload, I guess it's just an unload. Um, and they're unloaded into these chests and then belted over, so 168,000 space science here, you know, no big deal. 67,000, 67, 67, okay. 
Um, what's a, what's these weight conditions? So basically, just again, as simple as you can get: empty cargo wagon and full cargo wagon. Like, why overcomplicate things when you can do it simply? <laughs> um, and then they have red green on a belt, blue purple on a belt, yellow space on a belt. Again, this is basically the same type of deal you'd have like in your starter base for sending belts to laps. Um, they're very nice rainbow looking belts though, especially when they come up like this. Oh man, so nice. And then fully prodded, of course, the two prod mods in here, and then 12 beacons on all of these laps to actually you know, consume the massive amount of science. Uh, and in total, there are 457 laps. That is a lot of laps. Uh, 64,000 beacons, 10K assemblers, 11K furnaces, um, 0.6K mining drills. You can kind of just take a look here. 45,000 stack inserters. Holy cow. Um, so there's that. Let's take, um, before we end it here, let's take another look at production. Because I always like to look at stats past the science so if we look at a one minute, uh, 740,000 iron a minute, almost 600,000 copper a minute, basically 350,000 green circuits a minute, 80,000 red circuits a minute, almost 100,000 steel a minute, which is insane. Steel's super expensive, 74,000 rails. Of course, basically all that's for purple science. Um, 25,000 gears a minute, 11,000 processing units a minute. Expect this to be a little higher. I think I was backed up, or I just had incorrect expectations. Um, now, all time, this is probably my favorite thing to look at. So, throughout the 200 and some odd hours they've played this, they've made 2.6 billion iron, 2.1 billion copper, 1.3 billion circuits, 600 million copper, almost 300 million, or sorry, uh, classic, over 300 million red circuits, almost 300 million. 234 million rails, 50 million low density structures. This is nuts. Low density structures are super expensive. 42 million processing units. And in science, they've made a complete total of 32 million of every single science. Um, so currently, as you can see in this video, we have almost completed. I don't think it was at the start, but from wherever it was, it's now almost done with mining prod 178, which is basically half a, half a million uh, science. Um, and then they have no bot research really to speak of, which makes sense. Like they don't use bots, so there's no reason to get this. Uh, they're essentially spending all the research points on mining prod. There's nothing else really worth spending it on. In fact, they haven't even unlocked. I mean, again, there's no point. They don't have bot. There's no reason to unlock these. I, I guess just for the heck of it. Um, but why not just keep increasing your mining prod, right? Make the patches basically infinite. I mean, they are essentially already with this mining prod, but why not just keep cranking out? Needs to research something. And uh, yeah, I love this. Really, really solid base. Um, one of the few, I think I've seen maybe before one or two more, I feel like Imp's last base maybe was mostly belt base. I don't fully remember. I've seen one or two more bases in this tour series that are like mega base, basically fully belt production. But this is, this is a really good one, um, if you couldn't tell. This is extremely impressive from imp uh, 10k science per minute first off generally impressive like that's just an impressive science per minute number um on top of that 60 ups easily this base i mean the base is running full tilt you saw production we're at 8.4 update time keeping in mind i have a bunch of other crap open on my computer i bet you i could drop this down like i literally have probably like 40 chrome tabs open like obs running discord running Excel's open, like all this other stuff on my computer going right now, and we're right here. Um, you don't even drop below 60 DPS in single player until around 15 to 16 update time. So this could go even higher. Like like this could almost, not quite, but this could almost double. Um, I'm not sure if it would really scale that way, but you get my point. Like this is ridiculously efficient for a very solid 10K science per minute. And it's because so much thought was put into this design in this base like as we saw in the builds this just it's it's really quite um quite mind-blowing and, and very impressive to me that the amount of like thought and planning and attention to detail and stuff that went into these builds to make them just work so well in these like little units of direct insertion and stuff um really really well done by imp um 
this is uh this is why I love doing these. <laughs> it's so inspiring. I hope it's inspiring to you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Um, and I really do look forward to doing more of these. Um, again, I, I haven't not I, I there, there hasn't been a lack of them because I didn't want to do them. I just haven't had the time um, or the energy to do it. It's a lot of talking, um, definitely some thought and uh, takes a lot of time. But I really look forward to doing that. There's some crazy ones that sounds like queued up from the descriptions people gave me. So I really look forward to those. Thank you so much for submitting this. I know it was a long time ago um, and I, you know, I took forever to get to it. But if you still do watch the content, uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is super impressive. If you guys enjoyed, a like is appreciated uh, so other people can find this, you know, be inspired as well. Uh, if you're new to the channel and want to see more content like this, definitely subscribe and turn on notifications to keep up with all future content. And again, leave your thoughts below. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.